Hi viewers, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depend on your time zone, I say hello to you all. Today we have a news for you here and the headline says Why Nigeria may divide this year 2020? Before I go ahead with the news in detail, I will not hesitate to say press the bell icon so that you will be notified anytime we we'll have news or video for you. And also the rest of Skybot is very important. Now let's go ahead with the news in detail. Why Nigeria may divide this year 2020? Because 13 members of the House of Laws, United Kingdom, have expressed concern over the killing by Boko Haram insurgent in the North, East and Fulanian men in the Middle region. The Upper House of the Parliament members said the failure of the federal government to protect Nigerians was a breach of the Commonwealth Charter. They requested the Commonwealth to raise the killing with its ministerial action group. This was contained in a letter to the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland, dated September 14th, co-signed by Baroness Cox. Baroness Kennedy, Jim Shannon, Fiona Bruce, former Archbishop of Canterbury, Lord Williams and the 14 others. They cited a report by the UK or Party Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion or Belief, which accused unarmed officials of being complicit in the bloodshed in the country. The reference report was titled Nigeria Unfolding Genocide. According to the parliamentarians, the APPGS concern reflected the finding of a report by Amnesty International. We dried our tears addressing the tour on children of Northeast Nigeria conflict, which concludes that the Nigerian army have committed war crime and crimes against humanity during their operations. The lawmakers wrote the Nigerian army's former chief of staff, Lieutenant General Tiflus Danjuma, whom some of us have met and spoken to says the armed forces are not neutral. They collude in the ethnic cleansing in riverine states. The state's failure to protect the citizen is a clear breach of his obligation under the Commonwealth Chapter in respect of human rights. The Lord submitted. The letter added, there is now an urgent need to ensure adequate protection and aid for those suffering the loss of families, members, and the destruction of their homes and livelihoods, and to end impunity by ensuring that complaints related to human rights violations are promptly, independently, and impartially investigated and those responsible are held to account after fair trials. The group requested the Commonwealth scribe to raise the urgent concern with the Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group. We will be very happy and willing to meet in person or perhaps more practically online via Zoom to discuss how we might proceed this set. That's the end of the news. So, brothers and sisters, my viewers, you've heard it. This is what we are talking about, and people think we are joking here. However you see it, Nigeria is going to break up, and Biafra will march. And same time, we will march if they are really serious about what they are doing. Coming together as Biafra will do the world, fighting for their personal problem is a better option. We know that we also have our differences between Ududuwa and Biafra, but 
There is nowhere in the history book that you've heard that a Biafra man killed the one man or the one man killed a Biafra man. That's because no matter what they do, that they still love each other. They still believe that human being is human being created by Almighty God in heaven. That you do not suppose to kill him unnecessarily. That you don't suppose to kill him unnecessarily. But for Fulanis, man, forget about this people. They kill unnecessarily, thinking that they own the world. They own the. If they, in fact, they see themselves as God in heaven. That is more reason why we should stop deceiving ourselves. Look at the whole killing going around of the whole part of Nigeria. Because some people think they are born to rule and they can do anything and get, get, get away with it. I'm some local idiot that call themselves our governors. People like Dave Omar, he will be busy making, uh, telling us how many roads, how many flyovers he have done in his state. But he have not won the command and tell us how many people the flan, so called flan, have killed in his state. How many bloodshed? You have not come out one day to open his thinking mouth and tell us how many bloodshed, how many killings is going on in his state. When you bureau today, more than 1,000 Igbos will die. Slaughtered by flan men and fake Boko Haram soldiers and police will have in Igbo land that call themselves flanis. And they have not come out one day to say anything about it. Or he keep on telling us how many roads he have done, how many flyover he has done. What is our problem about that? If we all die, die today, who is going to stay driving that flyover? If all flying hand men kill us today, all of us end up. Who is going to drive in that road? Who is going to uh, 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 sell in the market he, he says he's building? These are the things we are talking about. These governors, they, are, they behave like people that not go to school. They behave like people that not even attend any, uh, any four corner of all of the universities. It's unfortunate. But we will continue to fight for Biafra because Biafra will be restored. And people like Dave Omaya, Obiano, Okezi Bazo, Ifan Yubani, all of them, without uh, judiciary governor, in Imo State, all of them will be ashamed of themselves. Time shall come. They will ask us, please forgive us, we will say no. Well, I do not have much to say than to say, oh hey Biafra, oh hey Biafra, oh hey Biafra. Biafra is here to stay. And nobody born of a woman can stop Biafra restoration. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Cheers. And please do not forget to share this news. It's very important. I'm